Bom, estou aqui no evento da Checkpoint Experience com o Nitsan Ziv, que ele é o vice-presidente de prevenção de ameaças da Checkpoint. How are you, Nitsan? Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, uh, we are going to talk some of some prevention the companies have to have to not be invaded. Okay. Uh, Let's start with IoT. How is the I, how IoT security today? So IoT security is today built into the device itself. One of the problems is that you've got millions of devices and when you've got any problem, you need to update millions of devices out there and nobody is updating. So once you find any weakness in one of them, the weakness stays there for years and nobody will patch them. So if you think about hospital, for example, that might have a very old equipment and nobody's updating them, for years this will be a weakness inside the infrastructure over there. So this is something that is not just about the vulnerability, but also the inability to patch it. And this is something that goes with you as your security postures for years. And how do you see the market? of security in the corporations. I mean, uh, the corporation leaders know what to do with security. So the corporates have good guys trying to do whatever they can to protect the corporate assets. The bad guys, on the other hand, they've got a huge incentive to get those data and basically um, make money out of them. So it's always a struggle between the bad guys and the good guys to do this. So we see corporate always trying to up their security, but think about it that they're fighting against thousands of hackers out there and they always need to be on their toes and always push the security in one level up. And that's a, a continuous challenge. And G the GPDR is is going to to bring a big problem for companies. I I mean, they have to be more conscientious about the to keep safe the data. How it it is difficult and how to prevent the leaking, for example. So. The laws of protecting the data actually make the company's executive accountable for the data itself, to make sure that they've got the right measures, to make sure that they do the right actions in order to prevent those kinds of things to happen. It doesn't mean it won't happen, but you need to take the measures and you need to invest the time and the money to make it happen. As a consumer, I'm very happy that somebody takes care of my data and my data is not just out there. Um, so I think it's a great move in terms of evolution of the internet and the maturation of the internet that we can move our services to the cloud and trust the cloud because we know the companies are now accountable and thinking about holding the data. Uh, so I think it's a change for the best. Okay, uh, let's talk to automotive market, okay? The, the cars today, uh, nowadays, are becoming uh, like computers over wheels now. Uh, how can we prevent the hacker to assume a car, for example? What's the level of the security the car needs to have? So first of all, it's not like a computer, it is a computer. Inside the smartphones, you find the same chip that you can find inside the cars. They actually run Android in most cases, it's exactly the same thing. So every vulnerability that you might find on Android device is relevant also to cars. Now think about it that inside the car, You've got a lot of things. You've got microphones that can listen to everything that happens inside the cars. You might have a camera. You might have GPS coordinates. And all of this information can be exposed to anybody. So this is the ultimate tracking machine, ultimate things that things can be exposed to the internet. And more than that, it is always connected using 3G SIM or 4G SIM to the cellular network. So you've got everything that you need over there. So manufacturers of cars are trying to invest more and more in making this happen and secure the machines themselves. But as we go along, the hackers are investing more and more efforts to, yes. to, to do exactly the same thing. Yes. Think about it that you've got a car, you can easily and remotely do that. There were several proof of concept already presented in the internet. Um, and this means that automotive needs to boost up the game as well to make sure that cars are secure. And, and we see a few acquisitions in the past years, but that's far from enough. In your opinion, uh, who is the responsible, most responsible, the industry or the user of the car? 
for the security. So I think the uh, industry itself needs to be the protective um, force in that because most users think about a car as something that they get into the morning, get out at work and, and do their life. They can't be held accountable to do that and hopefully uh, the manufacturers will boost the security. But if not, we've got the tools, we've got the applications that you can actually download to your smartphone, uh, to your, sorry, to your smart car and protect it using just like any mobile device. Okay, thank you very much for your interview and for your time. Pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. E você continue aqui no Voit, tem muito conteúdo bacana aqui em vídeo, em texto, em imagem e em podcast também. Te vejo no próximo vídeo. Tchau.